All right, good day. Thank you for joining me and welcome to this edition of the EV Revolution Show. My name is Kenneth Bacor for my review of the 2020 Lincoln Aviator plug-in hybrid electric vehicle, PHAV. It's a mouthful to say, especially on this early cool morning here in fall in Southern Caledon, where I had an opportunity to come out and just give you a few of my thoughts about this vehicle that I've been spending a few days with. So let me get right into it. Now the Lincoln Aviator is the second largest SUV in the Lincoln model line um, and it only comes in a plug-in hybrid electric version for the Grand Touring Edition. And that's the one that I have here today, a 2020 with about 7,000 and change kilometers on it. Thank you very much for Ford Canada for allowing me, or Lincoln Canada, excuse me, for allowing me the use of this vehicle for a few days. It is a big SUV. It's a full-size SUV. The next biggest size up from this is the Navigator, which is even bigger, but this is big enough for me, I'll tell you folks. And it really does feature what Lincoln calls their most advanced hybrid technology. So being that's a plug-in electric hybrid uh, vehicle, it has two powertrains, power sources. It has a three liter V6 engine, twin turbo, of course, and it has a okay size battery pack of 13.6 kilowatt hours. Before I get into more of the specs, let me look at the design of it. So as you can see, the Lincoln is very refined as Lincoln's should be. Uh, this is actually the model that you see Matthew McConaughey on in his commercials where he's staring out into the wilderness, uh, going fishing in the middle of nowhere, whatever. It's this vehicle that he's promoting that they signed him for. And it is a really nice vehicle. It's, it's got nice lines, it's big, it's very comfortable inside. Uh, you'll listen to some of my comments on my driving impressions coming up later in the video, but it is a well-equipped and fully luxurious SUV with all the appointments. The seating is great for, in this model, six people because it has uh, two bench seats in the front, two in the middle, and a small third row as well, which folds down electronically and uh, gives you lots of different cargo space. So the inside is very luxurious. Uh, as you can see by the videos and the pictures, uh, they'd spare no expense here. <laughs> There's lots of things to play with in this vehicle. This is the loaded version. Of course, the Grand Touring comes with everything, uh, even a rear uh, separate audio and heating controls, a little console for the back people as well. And from a cargo space, it's huge. And again, SUVs are designed to carry people and things around and tow, uh, things like that. So uh, with cargo volume, if it's just behind the um, uh, the third row, which is the, the, the smallest, I guess, area for cargo, it's about 18.3 cubic feet or about 519 liters. If you put the second row down, you increase that to 41, just under 42 cubic feet uh, at 1183 liters. And if you uh, fold down all both rows, you get 77, almost 78 cubic feet of storage space. That's 2200 liters. That is huge. Talk about camping mode. You can camp a family of four in this thing. Now this size and refinement and all the stuff that's in here comes at a cost for weight and it is a heavy vehicle. Uh, listing in at over 5,600 pounds, that's almost 2,600 kilograms for this all-wheel drive edition Grand Touring. Now it can tow in saying that and I'll talk about the powertrain in a sec. It has a towing capacity with a class 4 uh, tow package. You can buy these as options. You can tow uh, up to anywhere around 5,600 to 6,000 pounds roughly but you know again check check the specific specs out. You can get this with the wiring harnesses and all that kind of stuff. As I mentioned, the heart of any uh, plug-in hybrid electric vehicle is its powertrain, and this has two, the three liter V6 turbo engine, as I mentioned, and a 75 kilowatt electric motor, uh, which uh, again is fueled from a 13.6 kilowatt hour battery pack. Now the battery pack has 96 lightweight pouch style cells, according to Lincoln, using lithium ion chemistry. I don't have any specifics on the chemistry, but it's going to be industry normal. It has active cooling and, and, and heating and all that stuff with the battery pack. All right, so what all that gives you is an EPA total range of 460 miles or 740 kilometers or so. And again, that's a total range combining gas, fuel, and electricity. Now the electric motor and the electric components are able to receive level one and level two charging. Uh, so it does come just with the J1772 port on it. There is no DC fast charging. Again, such a small battery uh, would, wouldn't really, would be meaningless really to try to do that. This can charge up in just a few hours. 
So Lincoln likes luxury. They like all kinds of different options for this vehicle, and this has tons when it comes to drive modes. There's eight different drive modes in this vehicle. You've got your normal, you've got a conserve where it kind of uses more or less uh, fuel and efficiency goes back and forth to the battery. You've got an excite for if you really want to put the pedal to the metal. Slippery, so if you're into uh, you know unquestionable or questionable traction situations, because there's also a deep conditions, which is more so for if you're really into heavy snow going up uh, skiing, going up a mountain or something like that, especially if you're pulling something as well. There is a tow haul mode. There's a pure EV mode, which, and then there's a preserve EV, which means you can use the battery, and then once it gets to a certain level, the engine will come on to continue to charge that to keep it at that so that level, that uh, whatever that minimum level is. Now, staying on the theme of technology. Lincoln does advertise with the Aviator some intuitive technologies, one of them being the phone as a key. Hmm, where have I seen that before? Becoming very popular. Thank you, Tesla, for doing that. Yes, your phone can be your key. You don't need a, the fob. It does come with a fob, but you can program it, walk up, the doors will unlock, all that kind of stuff. The heavens will part and everything will be great. Also has an air glide suspension with dynamic lower entry. So great if you need to lower it a bit for, for maybe elderly or other people that's uh, hard. It is a bit of a little bit of a step to get up into this vehicle. So that's a nice feature. And then it has adaptive suspension with road preview type of options through a camera system. Comes with all kinds of different uh, uh, technology and, and driver assist. Uh, including things like their Copilot 360 and 360 Plus, which add, adds things like traffic jam assist, uh, evasive steering assist. If you need to, if the vehicle senses that somebody's maybe going to cut them off, it will uh, take an evasive maneuver. Reverse braking assist, I guess, like a rear cross traffic alert, and active par park assist. Now, I didn't have time to try the park assist. You know, I really find the park assist systems kludgy on a lot of these. Um, uh, so I, I really, really, I mean, I'm just old school. I, I'm used to parking, but I'm sure it works well. Now, along with those technologies, you do get additional driver assist uh, like blind spot detection with cross traffic alert, as I mentioned, pre collision assist, automatically emergency braking, which is pretty well standard everywhere, lane keeping assist, a rear view camera with, with a washer, which I thought was a little nice feature because you always have to remember to go around and clean those, those cameras off where whatever vehicle you have. It's important, they do get dirty, and auto high beams, which is pretty standard with a lot of premium vehicles nowadays. Now, I've been able to achieve a decent EV range. You'll see my chart, uh, my daily driving. You know, when, when I get these EVs, folks, as you know, I look at the I try to look at them from an EV, not from a, just a general vehicle perspective. So I try to drive them as much as possible in electric only mode. And that's what I do. I charged up every night at home on my level two charger and drove it till the uh, battery is empty and then use the engine for the rest of it. So you'll see in my driving habits, I didn't do too bad in being able to drive mostly in electric, in electric mode, but that's just for inner city runs. And I'll tell you, you know, I'll give you my, my, my feeling on the vehicle at the end of the show. One of the things I found funny in looking through all the documentation is that it has active grill shutters. And I'm thinking, this is a big SUV. I don't think active grill shutter is going to do much in lowering aerodynamics on something that's almost 6,000 pounds. But hey, what do I know? I'm no engineer. Now, one of the things this vehicle has that I've been uh, driving around for the last few days is a fantastic sound system. It's like living basically sitting in a concert hall for a few days. They call it the Ravel Ultima 3D audio system, and it can have up to 28 speakers throughout. But I do have to say, you know, give my hats off to Lincoln, they spent a lot of time and money in crafting the sound system for this vehicle, and it is truly phenomenal. I didn't really get an opportunity to put this through any, any serious driving as far as weather goes. It does have intelligent all-wheel drive, so it goes back and forth automatically uh, between uh, the, the rear wheel, front wheel, uh, or rear and all-wheel drive system, excuse me, and if it, you know, obviously if it uh, has any slippage in winter or anything like that, it will compensate accordingly. So let me now show you my driving impressions, a little bit quick couple of minutes of what I thought of this vehicle as I'm driving it around. So just a quick summary of my driving impressions uh, on this Lincoln Aviator, a big boat. It's a big SUV, so it's going to handle like a big SUV. It's got a lot of weight. It's over 5,000 pounds. It can tow, so it's got a big engine, uh, small, not that big of a battery, but there's a lot of weight to move around, so you have to take that into consideration with your braking, accelerating, all that kind of stuff. So it's pretty quiet. I'm in all battery mode right now still, and it's relatively quiet. You can get some road noise. It's comfortable. It should be. It's a, almost a $100,000 Canadian vehicle. It's got all the appointments. Leather this, leather that, power this, power that. Should have everything. Should be nice and comfortable, and it is. Now, from an EV perspective, and that's, of course, the way I look at these reviews when I review them, um, in my opinion, the battery is way too small. This is a bit of a token vehicle for plug-in electric hybrids. Um, it's about, I'm averaging about 35 kilometers on EV only. Now, if I'm just booting around in the city doing some uh, ch chores and errands, 
Um, somebody like my wife who doesn't drive very much every day, uh, she drives less than that back and forth to work when she goes to work. That would be idea, something like that that you could plug in. So you, then you're not running on gas very often. However, um, my driving habits are greater than that. I'm about 60 kilometers a day, so I keep tapping into the engine on most cases. You know, really, the you it's dependent on the use case for this vehicle, whether it would fit your lifestyle or not. One thing I am experiencing in this vehicle is kind of like a Rivian esque. Rivian esque is that a word? So like a Rivian experience. Uh, you know, Rivian coming out with their big eight passenger SUV. This is a big six passenger SUV. I think you can get it in different configurations, but it's big, heavy. And when in, this is in all electric mode, I get the experience of what it would feel like driving the Rivian uh, because that's, uh, again, got, it's got a big battery. It's going to go a lot longer range than this is. So that's one thing I'm getting a bit of a preview on. But otherwise, good drive, you know, from an all from a uh, EV perspective and from a plug-in hybrid, uh, in my opinion, the battery is way too small. I think they have the room in this vehicle. They could have added much more vehicle to make a bigger use case for it, especially for the price point. But driving it, it's comfortable. If you're used to a big SUV, then this will be fine for you. Pricing on these vehicles, well, it's not cheap. Uh, this MSRP starting price is at $75,083 Canadian, uh, and it goes up from there. This was just under $92,000 for this tester for the Grand Touring Edition with all various options that you see uh, on here. Uh, a very nice vehicle, but <laughs> certainly not for the weak hearted. Now let me give you some pros and cons of what I think about this vehicle. Um, you know, it does have lots of horsepower. Again, I'm more of a purist when it comes to EVs. I'd love to see more all electric vehicle, uh, all, elect all electric vehicle, excuse me, out there. But I do understand the reality of the situation. We're not quite there yet with cost of scale, economies of scale, availability, and, and models and choice to choose from. So there is a world still for plug-in hybrids because you good folks know I'm very much supportive of a pl anything with a plug. So this does have uh, you know, lots of horsepower when that twin turbo V6 kicks in, of course, and, and, and propels this. And again, there's a lot of weight to throw around, so it does have that. Uh, even in all electric mode, it has plenty enough get up and go. It's not, not gonna beat anybody off a line, but to move people and to move things around, it's gonna work quite well. Now, I talked about that electric only driving mode. It is another pro for this vehicle. I'm glad that they have that. You can exhaust the battery, maximize that as much as possible. Um, I wish it had more range though, and that'll be coming up in my con, but it does work quite well and easy to charge and it doesn't take too long. So the cabin in this, as I mentioned, is another pro. It's extremely well outfitted. Fit and finish is really good. The materials, the quality, it's very classy, upscale. This is a premium vehicle, folks, so it should have all the bells and whistles. I did find that there was a little bit of rattling coming from something in the back. I didn't know what that was, so I didn't really investigate it. 
but uh, you know, at almost uh, 7,300 kilometers or so, uh, it's still holding together really well. I mentioned some of the driver assist. You can go on the website and see all kinds of videos on their safety features, the, the Copilot 360, all that kind of stuff that's out there. But it's got a ton of safety features, and that's one thing I do like as a pro for this vehicle. Um, it is designed to keep occupants safe, to, uh, again, uh, help, help you steer out of situations. It's a big SUV, so it's going gonna, it's gonna to take a lot. Now, Lincoln touts this as a, co as a pro, and I guess so to a degree. You know, it's certainly better than the norm of improved fuel economies. With the electric assist uh, battery pack, you know, you can drive 21 miles, 23 miles, whatever that is, you know, 40, 35, 40 kilometers or so in electric mode. And if you're doing a lot of short trips, that's going to be very advantageous to you. So it does limit the fuel economy. I have to admit, I didn't dip into the fuel very much during my five days of driving this vehicle around. Again, but I know how to maximize the EVs and I use that to my strength. So as I mentioned in my driving experience, it really is a pleasant vehicle to drive even though it's big, so you have to be cognizant of that. Negative in this is the limited EV driving range and power associated with that. I really, really wish this thing had a much bigger battery. I think they have enough space. They could have re-engineered this to put a much bigger battery and a smaller fuel tank today. And I think that that uh, is really may hurt sales of this vehicle. Um, you know, those who are looking for better fuel economy will get it a bit but I don't think it works. I don't think it really makes that big of a difference. And the price, you know, when you're up, upping this to the plug-in hybrid electric version, you pay a premium for that. It's not cheap. Uh, you know, as I mentioned, the MSRP base on the non-plug-in hybrid is about 75 grand Canadian. This is 92. So uh, yes, it's got some options, but you know, it's a pretty big jump for that little bit, for that fuel economy and for that all electric version. So uh, I think that's a con. I think, you know, pricing wise, uh, Lincoln could have done much better on this. All right, in my final summary of this, you know, is it a good vehicle? Absolutely, it's a good vehicle. I mean, for 92,000 bucks, it better be a good vehicle. Now, would I recommend this? You know, I'm a little on the fence on this, folks. I'm gonna give it a yes, and I'm gonna give it a no. And let me explain myself on this. My recommendation would be based on your use case or the owner's use case. So if you're, let's say, a stay-at-home mom, you're taking care of kids, you gotta to go to soccer, hockey, pick up from school, all this kind of normal stuff where you're only going to be driving, you know, 10 to 20 miles uh, through those errands, you know, 20 to 30, uh, maybe 40 kilometers a day, even maybe that because you're getting a factor in winter range. Then if that's your most use case, then this is a great vehicle for you. If you want a premium SUV that has lots of space, that can carry lots of stuff, that can tow, that can do the things that this can do. But if you're going to be driving it consistently over the all electric range of this vehicle, um, to the point that you're using, you know, more, probably more gas, more fuel range per day than you are electric per day if you average that out, then I would not, I would discount this vehicle from your choice. I think you're paying a premium and you're not getting a whole ton back for that. You know, it's nice to see Lincoln do this. I think a bit, this could be a bit of a compliance vehicle as, you know, I'm not hiding the fact, folks, that I think that that these vehicles that come out, the plug-in hybrids that have very small batteries, that only get 10, 20, you know, 25 miles or so, uh, 25 to 35 kilometers of range are really impractical for the most part, again, depending on the use case. And they do cost a premium, so do you get that balance for it? Um, you know, I'm fully confident that this thing will last, the battery won't give you any problems, there's a good warranty, all that kind of stuff that Lincoln will stand behind, so it's not that, it's more the use case. So if you do do much more driving, then I would probably not look at this a vehicle, I would look at something else that has a bigger battery pack, or, or, or wait for something like the Rivian or, or something else. I do again want to thank Ford Lincoln Canada for allowing me the use of this vehicle for a few days. Um, I just kind of happened to get it almost last minute, it wasn't really too much of a plan, but I wanted to jump on it and get something different. I knew going in that this has a small battery pack, so I knew kind of what to expect. Uh, so, you know, it didn't it didn't fare too bad in my use case for this typical week. But again, my, this is a, a, an atypical situation since we're still, you know, in, 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 uh, in pandemic mode and we're not really, uh, I'm in sales, I'm not allowed to go see customers, everything's being done over the phone, over Zoom and WebEx and all this stuff. So normally I would be putting much more miles and kilometers on my vehicles that I do than, than what's happening now. So, you know, then I would be chewing into much more gas. So. Uh, you know, again, choose it wisely. You look at your situation and look at your finances if you want a premium SUV. All right, and that's it for this edition of the EV Revolution Show. My review of the 2020 Lincoln Aviator PHEV. Thanks very much for taking the time to watch me again on YouTube. If you're subscribing, much humble thanks. Uh, please uh, give me your comments. I'm sure there are owners out there. I got some great comments back on my Honda Clarity. 
uh, review actually and some corrections which I put up. So thanks everybody for paying attention and letting me know. I'm always open to get more information and to be corrected. So please don't hesitate to do so. Of course, humble thanks to Patreon supporters. You know who you are. Uh, check out the website and this, these details if you figure you want to subscribe. Everybody stay safe. Continue to follow local health guidelines, of course, as we continue to move through this. Now winter's coming, so we have to be more cognizant of that. And continue to watch me and uh, follow the EV revolution. Lots of good stuff coming. I still got another car review. Oh, it's been a busy month that I got to do. I'm, I'm, of course, in the Eco Challenge stuff for uh, Ajac, all kinds of stuff going on there. And then I've got my real life happening, so, uh, which, of course, is busy enough with my family. Anyway, thanks very much for watching. Everybody stay safe. And until the next time, I'll see you when I see you. Take care and bye-bye.